Hi everybody, this is Stuart Barlow. Welcome to my latest video which is going to look at another aspect of the John Dobson talk that I was going to do at the Old Low Light over Easter. This time I'm going to look at what Dobson did in Tynemouth after not doing any work in the area for about 15 years. This was a period when Dobson was helping to change the face of Newcastle with Richard Granger and designing numerous grand houses across Northumberland and Durham. In 1838, John Dobson prepared designs for Abraham Dawson to convert Tynemouth House, shown here, into a hotel. It was going to be quite grand and would have included a promenade room, a newsroom, museum, assembly room, billiard room and seawater baths. It was called the, Gra the Crown Hotel and Baths. Dawson placed adverts in newspapers to raise the capital for the work and asked builders to submit tenders for Dobson's design. Yet I have found no trace of a Crown Hotel in Tynemouth in any trade directory of the period. Then, in May 1839, Tynemouth House was being advertised as lodging suitable for any nobleman or gentleman's family during the approaching summer season, suggesting the conversion never took place. By 1860, Tynemouth House was a school and is now part of King's Priory School. A few years later, in 1842, Dobson was working again in Tynemouth and had designed the base and plinth for the monument to commemorate Admiral Lord Collingwood, which was paid for by public subscription. It took another two and a half years to tend and build Collingwood's monument, and in September 1845, Dobson placed the head on top of John Graham Lowe's statue of Collingwood in the presence of various dignitaries, following which they and the workmen were regaled with refreshments. Dobson completed the monument we see today a few years later, in 1849, when he added the pedestals at the front, onto which four heavy guns from Collingwood's ship, the Royal Sovereign, were placed. In contrast to Nicholas Pevsner's comment that the monument is, I quote, surprisingly large, I think Dobson's design is just right, with Collingwood overlooking the mouth of the River Tyne and showing what can be achieved with mass rather than ornamentation. Throughout his career, John Dobson undertook surveying work and laid out sites for his clients. At around 1850, Dobson laid out a site in Tynemouth around Priors Terrace, circled here in red. While Dobson laid out these streets and plots for his clients, he wouldn't normally design any of the houses on the sites, and also, the small scale of the organisation of the building industry at this time meant that sites were often developed slowly, as only three or four houses would be speculatively built at any one time. In this case, Dobson is meant to have designed a house for Mr Lawton on Priors Terrace, and in the 1861 census, shows that a Benjamin Lawton was living at the seventh house along Priors Terrace, which makes the location of this his house around the area circled in red on this photograph. But does it look like a Dobson's house? Mm, I'm not sure. The nave of Tynemouth Priory, which had acted as Tynemouth's parish church, was in ruins by the middle of the 17th century. This, combined with problems of access, had led to the building of Christ Church as the new parish church. But a chapel was retained in the Priory for burial services, but it was converted into a powder magazine in 1810. Tynemouth Parish regained possession of this chapel, which was the Percy Chantry, in the early 1850s, and started to raise funds to carry out its restoration as proposed by John Dobson. A chantry is a chapel 
where Mass would be chanted for a particular person or family. An English heritage believes that this chapel was sponsored by Prior John Langton in the late 15th century, as his initials, ILP, appear twice in the ceiling. Dobson carried out his restoration of the Percy Chantry in 1852, no doubt taking advantage of his speculative designs for the Priory and Chantry he'd undertaken 35 years previously. Dobson replaced the tracery in the circular window shown here above the altar, as the original tracery had disappeared, and we covered the floor with Minton tiles. Dobson also restored the sculptured roof bosses seen on the left, with their delightful and varied imagery, and reglazed the other windows, which included this one on the right, by the notable stained glass designer William Wales of Newcastle. Wales had previously worked with Pugin, and you'll find his window designs in Exham Abbey and the Cathedral Church of St Mary's in Newcastle. Well, that's all for the moment, and when I'm able to do my talk at the Old Low Light, I hope you will come along and find out more about Dobson's work in Tymouth, as well as the other builders he designed in the North Shields and Tymouth area. In my final video, I'll look at Dobson's other buildings in North Shields, done in this later period of his career, and also something in colour coats. In the meantime, stay home. Stay safe and look after yourselves. Bye for now.